The 1948 tour of England, famous as Bradman's last campaign, was fraught with difficulty for Miller. The expectations on Miller on that tour were huge because he'd been so successful in the victory tests. And I don't think he lived up to those, those standards. But I didn't, didn't live up to his own high standards anyway. In 1948, Miller was having some problems with his back. I also think that it was probably all a bit too easy for Miller that tour. He, 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 would, have, he would have played better cricket if there'd been more of a challenge. And I think the fact that um, they were winning easily all the time and they were winning against, uh, playing against people who were Miller's friends. Uh, Edrich and Compton and those people, he liked them, they were his friends. Uh, he probably didn't enjoy the easy victories against people that he liked. By now Miller was, in his own way, almost as popular as the Don himself. But he was by no means Bradman's favourite cricketer. I think the relationship between Miller and Bradman was always uneasy. Miller was very easy going and I think Bradman probably disapproved of that to an extent and there were a couple of instances uh, in England when uh, Bradman asked Miller to bowl and Miller had a bad back and threw the ball back to him. Then later on after the war um, uh, in a testimonial match Miller bowled a number of bounces at, uh, at Bradman which Bradman obviously didn't appreciate. In the 1950-51 Ashes series, Miller took 17 wickets and topped the batting averages, making an unbeaten century in Adelaide. He scored another century against the West Indies the following season and twice took five wickets in an innings. Miller was at his greatest as, a, uh, as an all-rounder, I think, in the early 50s. Um, I think he came back to Australia after the 48 tour and didn't have a very successful 48-49 series in Australia to the point that he was left out of the Australian team to South Africa in 49-50. Uh, but he went over there as a late replacement when Bill Johnston was hurt in a car crash. And it, it went very well in South Africa. So then we had reaffirmed his spot in the side for um, the 50-51 Ashes tour. And uh, he was Australia's leading player in that, in that summer and then followed up against the West Indies the season after. And that was where he really established his reputation, I think. Miller was, Miller was the star of a very good Australian team in that period. Um, and the great thing about that, the early 50s is that England had just as good a team. Uh, so you saw, you saw Miller at his best uh, competing and you saw some very good cricket. In 1955 against the West Indies, Miller once again stole the show. He made three test match centuries, including his highest test score of 147 in Kingston. Miller loved, loved the West Indies. He loved, he, he loved being there and he, he loved playing against them. I think the West Indies cricketers had more in common with, with Keith Miller than a lot of the Australian or English cricketers. There's an image of the West Indies cricketers as of carefree, carefree Caribbean cricketers but they played at home in a very hard school and, and the, 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 the competition within the West Indies was, was very hard, very tough. And I think Miller liked that. After Miller's match-saving 10 wickets at Lord's in 1956, Australia suffered heavy defeats in the third and fourth tests. There was media speculation that Miller might replace Ian Johnson as Australian captain. To me, it's insane that Miller was never captain of Australia. I mean, purely in terms of um, cricketing nous and cricketing ability, he was so clearly the obvious choice to be Australia's captain after Lindsay Hassett retired. And instead, the Australian selectors chose um, Ian Johnson as captain. Miller would certainly have been a more inspiring captain than, than Ian Johnson, uh, but. Johnson had all the attributes of uh, solidity and reliability that Miller didn't have. Um, the fact that Johnson was chosen over Miller is, mm, might well be a reflection of, of Bradman's uh, preference for um, uh, reliability uh, than sort of the volatile um, aspect that Keith Miller brought to the game. Their Majesties invited the Australian cricketers to tea at the castle. Here the Queen is talking to Miller. Probably the fact that, you know, when you toured England there was so much speech making to be made, all that sort of thing. And and really I couldn't imagine Keith Keith probably could have done it, but but I, I 
you know, I think it would have been a, a real effort. If those in power were skeptical about Miller's suitability for the captaincy, those who played under him in domestic cricket had no such doubts. Miller captained New South Wales with imagination and flair, never reckless, but often bold, prepared to risk defeat in order to win. And from time to time, the Cavalier came to the fore. Well, Miller was very good. He was uh, short on words. Sometimes uh, I've been with Miller when he's walked out onto the field with the New South Wales side, and he'll look around to find uh, who's in the team. And once I heard him say, oh, just find yourself scatter. And that was it, but move one yard out of position on the field and you'd get a nod to get back there. Uh, very, very quick to, to sense uh, what was going right and wrong and uh, he was a fine captain.